and welcome to the Inside Star Citizen Review. I wish I had some X-Files music to go in the background tonight because we are going to go alien mode tonight. We're going into alien week. It only makes sense they're introducing an alien ship. I love the alien vibes that the art directors and designers, uh, the developers in Cloud Imperium give. They, they have such a great vibe. Very, very detailed. Like you take the Banu Defender, always very just detailed. The lighting on that ship, amazing. Uh, you look at the Vandal, the Scythe, you look at these like very deadly kind of red vibe, like murderous, like they do such a good job at conveying like an alien presence or, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely alien vibes that you get from the ships that are the alien ships tonight. You know, Discord, the fam, they were throwing in the the, the, the the ship, the new ship, the rail in, I believe is how it's pronounced. The, the Xion ship. You know I love the Xion geometry. You know I love the Xion design, the Transformer-esque kind of feel and the design of the Xion. So I'm all about this ship. Um, we're going to have some bonus footage after the Inside Star Citizen review and really talk about the ship. But right now, let us just see what we got here. I'm so excited. I only saw a little bit in the Discord, you know, like, and then I kind of had to shield my eyes, turn away, because I don't really want spoilers. I want to really just see this for the first time with you guys and give you my honest reaction to what in the hell it is that I'm watching. So let's check it out, boys and girls. Where do we start? That is a good question. The alien stuff is more complex, so um, everything everything sort of stretches your brain just a little bit more. I also have Chris, you know, pushing me to sort of make it different, make it not not fully expected. Alien ships, I think, are super interesting because they have a completely unique aesthetic. In I'm already loving the vibe. I'm already loving the vibe of it. Uh, shout out to Paul Jones, by the way. When I had computer issues, he he donated like 50 bucks to help us get back on our feet. So shout out to Paul Jones. Love that dude. Inside, and this ship particularly, we wanted to create a alien cargo ship. So we wanted to have a sort of above oh, wow. entry level cargo ship. Wow, those front struts lace f completely flat as the landing gear? Whoa. Already loving it, man. See, dude. When the car 2 owl first came out, I was I was like absolutely in love. I was absolutely in love with the design and the look of it. It wasn't very functional back in the day. Uh, I've heard since that it's much better, but um, I just loved all the moving parts and pieces. Oh! It's back! The polka is back. It's been a while since I've got the polka, man. What I just happened there? That's cool. Thank you, Anarchy. Welcome to the stream, bro. It's already loving the look. Ship that could carry a good amount of cargo for its size, be well defended, multi-crew. We wanted it to be Jian, but we didn't want it to be Aopa, their, their combat brand. So we... Did crew, did crew just say Jian? Did he just say Jian? Like, is that how I need to start? I thought it was Xi'an. Like, I've always said Xi'an. I've said Xi'an. But like, is that how the English pronounce Xi'an? They say Xi'an, Xi'an, Xi'an. Is that it? I looked up this new company called Gatak, and this is the Gatak Raylan cargo ship. No, it's Gatak. That's how you say it. Oh, with a little N in the gnak, See, I said that right on the, see? See, I said it like she said it a long time ago and everybody said, no, it's not, it's not Gatak, it's Gatak, Gatak, it's Gatak, DG. That's what everybody's telling me. I'm like, no, 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 it's Gatak. You understand? Right, hot cup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do a brief history of House Gatak. All right, she's so nerdy. I absolutely love her. Like, I wish Christy could get a little bit more nerdy like this. I find like this very, very sexy. They were like, a I want a nerd. Urua, Christy, do you the great Christy, divide, be a nerd for me. Xi'an Civil War. Um, at the end of the Great Divide, House Klo, who didn't like the way that the peace talks were going, decided that they wanted to kill all the leaders of the houses that were engaged in peace talks. That's so right. they I sabotaged remember. the network of antique satellites, antique weather satellites that surrounded the um, Xi'an homeworld of Xiang, and 
accidentally destroyed the whole atmosphere rather than just the atmosphere above Oops. these socks. Oops. <laughs> That's one hell of a way to introduce the peace talks. Uh, we completely eradicated your atmosphere. Sorry about that. Can we start the peace talks now? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so after this tragedy, after everybody fled the home world to the ne next closest planet, Kawa, um, the house of Dua, in recompense for its loss, was elevated to the first imperial house. That's where the first emperors came from. And one of the first things that they did was reward people who fought under them for their service. So they awarded House Ngatak a license in perpetuity to build industrial spacecraft for the entire Saoxian. In wow. in the Saoxian, the um, Saoxian, the Xi'an Empire, they are known for being like really innovative and interested in discovering the next big, big cool thing in technology. And that's part of why they immediately jumped on the opportunity to make a ship that would be friendly to both Xi'an and humans. like. Cutting out stuff is their thing. The alien stuff is the hardest one to sort of deal with, with sort of branding. We did our usual. We came up with three sort of strong candidates to give to Chris to have a look at. And from there... I feel like this should be able to take a shit ton of damage. I, I want this to have... I'm not quite sure what the specs are. We're going to go into the specs after this. Don't tell me. We're going to do a whole other separate uh, bonus footage after this. But like, man... I hope to God this can at least carry like 300 SCU and that it's got like a shit ton of hit points on this thing. Yeah, it's, I mean, people will see that uh, very early on it was, it was almost locked in. It was like, okay, this is what we're doing. We're a lot more confident in how we approach these things now. You know, we make sort of stronger decisions. All these alien designs are really fucking cool. You can see the demand from this from the fam right here. You can see like we all want like all these different types of alien designs like right now, man. Like the more alien ships, the better this game's gonna be in my opinion, man. I want this to feel completely alien when I'm flying around. I don't want it just all human. So I love these designs. Visions right at the start to push those through. One of the big features of the ship was the fact that it changes shape like massively. So that's the really nice thing about this ship. And coupled with, uh, you know, the sort of final materials that we came up with, there's no mistaking the ship now. It's, it's okay. This is the Gatak cargo ship. There's no messing around. The Raylan crew capacity. I like what Paul just said right there. This is a Gatak, Gatak cargo ship. There is no messing around, man. That is nice. There's four people. Uh, so you have the the pilot, uh, you have uh, an engineer, and then you have the two extra crew to man the two man turrets, which are on the side of the ship and provide a, a good range of cover uh, for it. Uh, there is space for all four to be on the bridge when not in combat um, or elsewhere in the ship. But thank you, sir. I think I've got the, that. The roles are for. I'm gonna I'm going to put that on the platter. What uh, sir just put there. Uh, and we will check that out. Thank you so much. Yes, I do have that one. I, I, I saw Sir put some more information on here. I want as much information on the ship as possible when we're done with the Inside Star System review so we can go over this and see if it's worth the money. It, just the for the design. Has 320 right now, I'm of cargo, and this is all pretty much external. You can see it on the back of the ship. Part visual choice, part gameplay choice. They are fixed containers on the rear of the ship, and the cargo goes inside them. So having it external allows us to keep the internals of the ship all nice and compact, but also does give a toss-up in choice between do I pick a ship with lesser cargo, but is more... The only, the only constructive criticism I have is I would have loved that those weren't fixed. I would have loved that those were like all pods that attached into it. That would have been like pod, po uh, podular. <laughs> or modular actually but let's just say podular uh cargo design that have been that have been a little bit more sweet that have been a little bit more sweet protected or do i go for this uh, which can carry more in one run but has the risk of if i get jumped on in in transit my cargo is more at risk that looks that's that something looks fantastic. we always try to do with our ships is not have one ship that is superior in every single way to another ship that's that's equal to it we want those I like that trade-offs i love Even that from you know, trying to get into the ship, it's going to be a unique experience. So you've, you know, essentially you've got a grav left platform that's going to fly through the air, come and greet you. You get on it, click a button, takes you up to the entrance of the ship through the airlock. 
that's where you first get your oh dudes <laughs> oh dudes man dude the xian tech and the xian like look and design is so out of this world man that was like stellar man that was like a flying carpet going up to your ship man you know what i heard when i saw that little uh, graphic there this is what i heard a whole new world <laughs> it's a fucking flying carpet man aladdin going up there that was insane of the xian architecture within this ship when you choose to get on the lift to go up to habitation, <laughs> um, you know, you've got a console that's made out of like 50 different pieces in it. Oh, it looks so goddamn good, good inside. Position and then click the button, get on your elevator, which isn't the standard elevator either at the moment. It's at an angle, so you have a very different experience of like transitioning up. Okay, do you know how hard it is to design something like that that's angular? I mean, like, my God, man. That had to be a nightmare to design this ship, man. The people who designed this, just bravo right now. Just bravo right now. Do you know how hard it would be to design something like this that's all moving parts, that has an elevator that's diagonal, that goes up at like a 45 degree incline, man? That would be insane. To, to, that would just be insane to design this. What's going on, Oz? How you doing, dude? Yep. Through the floors, and the floors will also... Uh transform to sort of enable you to get through easily so then when you're in the habitation section you've got access to beds and lockers you can go left and right to the turrets so this is like a so this is like a human xion kind of hybrid ship like so they design this to keep humans in mind as well huh that's that's pretty that's pretty tight and escape pods and then you've got the dual race kitchen and bathroom section and then sort of like a common that kitchen area and then are there human babies like what are in those what are in those cargo containers in the uh, gallery wait 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 what what are in these things man what's going on here in the galley <laughs> what, what is going on what are they eating in here man what's going on in there what are we going to be eating in there and then you've got the dual race kitchen and bathroom section and then sort of like a comp oh what is that over to the right like way over there to the right dude what what is that what is going on here what? a scratch wall wow oh my god fermentation pods was what was in the galley oh my god dude i would totally go on that scratch wall that scratch wall looks very 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 comfy man scratch my back my grandpa used to do that all the time. He'd go up against the uh, corner sill and he'd start rubbing his back like a bear. <laughs> Those genetics are in me, man. I would just like go up against that scratch wall and start scratching my back like that. Dude, I'd buy it just for that. Communal eating area. <laughs> and then from there up, uh, basically it takes you into a more technical section. And so you can either go to um, a docking, which is at the rear of the ship. Um, and then you've also got uh, a good portion of components in like the sort of quite technically themed oh, cool, area of the sir. ship. And then you transition through there towards the bridge. And again in there is, um, we were looking at a way of being able to access components in a non-standard way. So the big stuff we've kept quite traditional because it makes sense, they're just there. Uh, but the smaller stuff, it's it's kind of like a component delivery system. So you choose which component you want to access. It's delivered to you. You can change out whatever it is you need to choose. Oh change, my god, the bridge is fucking tight. Absorbed back into the ship. Then you just transition into the bridge, open bridge. Um, and then, like I mentioned, the captain and the um, co-pilot at the front in the oh. large, oh. like floating, almost like UFO. Oh. Oh style uh seat. dude dude this is like a cartoon all on steroid crack on steroids crack and heroin at the same time like this is like this is this is amazing all these moving parts and pieces are ridiculous <laughs> dark ass can we speculate on these backpacks <laughs> and then Oz says backpacks are xion mind control attachments for the humans <laughs> So I think there's plenty of great opportunity in there for in terms of animation and what we can do with what's spinning, what's moving, My what's God. reconfiguring. 
how uh, tight was that? I just gotta I gotta watch that animation again because that was just like the, I I'm I'm fascinated here going up into the bridge area like that is that is really nice design. Change and then it's taken back off you and absorbed back into the ship. I mean, then what a crazy strange bridge, viewing bridge. area. Um, and then, like I mentioned, the You're like hanging the, out. You're hanging into it. In the, you're literally large, floating into the like, cockpit area. Think almost like UFO. Yeah, yeah, style, that is so uh, tight. So I think there's plenty of great opportunity in there for in terms of animation and what we can do with what's spinning, what's moving, what's reconfiguring. Um, so I think the ship team is going to have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, all this, all this grav left stuff, dude. Yeah, man, DY, that's that's such a cool idea. Like if engineering, you know, like engineering in a Xeon ship would be slightly different than a human ship would be really awesome. And that if like electrical components or electrical malfunctions happened in a Xeon ship, that like you lost like all that grav left tech, dude, or like, uh, you know, like it basically everything starts falling apart and transformations of the ship slow down. That would be really, really tight, DY. That would be awesome. So what does the Raylan add to Star Citizen as a whole? Where damage on the outside of the hull, if 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 the hull takes damage so much, these these pillars, these struts, uh, these struts break off or like mechanically they don't move the same anymore. That would also be really cool. That would also be really cool. Oh. It really increases the diversity of spaceships. Um, yeah, yeah, Dutch. Same, ones, same, dude. They are entire races of creatures and they don't just have combat ships. They oh wow yeah missiles good needs. they have their own transport needs so whatever we do as the human race there there is going to be mirrors for for those races oh i like that the door on the aft right there going out the back you see the uh back section man that's so alien dude that is such a good job the, 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 i love the lighting that kind of purpley blue kind of lighting mix that's really nice too when you are traveling through all the solar systems in the game, you don't want to just be seeing the, the same freelancer or the same hull everywhere. You want this variety of ships to encounter and ships to... Oh, she on tank cabbage? That would be badass, yeah. dude. The Gatak Raylan, and I hope I'm saying this right, is the newest addition to Star Citizen's expanding line of alien vehicles. <laughs> Jared's like, and I hope the lore people don't bone me on this one, you know, because listen, it looks like a tech. <laughs> like, don't get on me. <laughs> well, it's the first from our newest Xeon manufacturer. And you can learn even more about this ship, like all of its stats and capabilities, when it's revealed as part of this year's Alien Week festivities beginning this week which also includes the return of the tremendously popular baking contest, so get your ingredients ready. And to help you prep for all of the Alien Week festivities, let's check in now with the narrative team for a brief refresher of the known alien cultures of our galaxy. Or perhaps meet them for the very first time. See you, Mind's Eye. Have a good day, bro. You're going to miss all the universe. fun, man. But have a good night, ben, buddy. Thanks for the, the, thanks for the biddies, bud. People in the world to ever go Mind's to Mind's Eye's got the best timing ever. Because they love sports. Uh, and, but they don't really care about the teams. And it's kind of confusing for humans to go to a game with a large Banu crowd because the Banu just want to see exciting, cool stuff happen. So they're cheering for everyone throughout the game. They are totally up for having fun whenever. Like they work hard, they play hard, they take cat naps. They are extremely interested in enjoying life. Their society is organized around these work family guilds known as Sulis, where they're adopted from a young age as kind of an apprentice by a Suli that specializes in um, manufacturing spaceships or making weapons or cooking. They're very quick to give favors, but they also expect a favor in return. So be careful yeah. if a Banu asks you to, you know, pick them up at the airport. The Banu is the first alien race that humanity ever had contact with. There was Thank a God. human pilot kind of out seemingly in the middle of nowhere named Vernon Tarr, who was scanning for a jump point. Came upon a Banu vessel and Ooh, they upon this. it thinking it Okay, that's pretty badass that they're that, – okay, this is a story out of lore that I that I did in my lore video like years and years and years ago. And they're actually doing like some machinima to it. Wow, dudes. Wow, that's cool.
It was like an enemy ship, but once they got close enough, they realized, oh heck, that's an alien. That is it was so a fun cool. Run in that was initially very tense, but we quickly came onto friendly terms with them. They were happy to find new trading partners, and we were very happy to encounter aliens for the first time. Oh, that's badass. Bravo to the lore team for thinking about that. That's actually really cool because some people with the lore, they get a little bored. Personally, I love the lore. So the cool thing is that they made it a little bit more interactive. Very good job, lore team. Very good job. The Tavarin are a... I like this. They're going into all the alien cultures, man. Tavarin are one of my favorites. I think the Tavarin is probably my favorite alien race, man. Like they re they remind me of the Japanese or the uh like they they got that kind of Japanese bonsai feel you know what I mean, uh it just I just I don't know why the Tavarin remind me of the Japanese but like it just kind of reminds me about the Japanese culture uh, everything's very angular kind of samurai ish like everything about the Tavarin makes me feel that it just does. Martial society he immediately tried taking our territory and it was very hostile oh they're redoing this too this is fantastic. Too large wars the first tavarin war and the second tavarin war as a culture they're actually my favorite it feels like there's a lot of opportunities yes, for really interesting i agree haunted characters yeah yeah a big motivation for them is that their people hadn't developed uh terraforming technology and so their space to expand was very limited to worlds that were naturally <laughs> habitable. Uh, they were first they assimilated very into avian. the by force very after avian. the first Tevron War, and after the second Tevron War, they voluntarily assimilated themselves. They, as a people, decided collectively to throw their culture away. Humanity got a lot of our shield tech from them. Like, air shields were a Tevron invention, so we didn't have them before that war. Wow. You can see that in their ship designs, with the Prowler having these unique drop bays with the air shields for people to exit out of. A lot of Tavarin history was actually preserved by the UEE after the Tavarin themselves tried to purge it. Now, currently, we're seeing them enter a new phase of where the first Tavarin senator was recently elected. This elevation of a Tavarin seems to have sparked a recent interest in a cultural revival. Yes. So Tavarin are now starting to relearn their once lost language and starting to dabble in bits of... Y yes, and becoming more Tavarin again and saying, you know what, maybe I don't want to be sublimated by the human culture anymore, you know? Like there's that kind of like unrest in the background, man, that unease, you know? Like, hey man, they might just start back up. Just be like, fuck this shit. Tired of humans again, you know? Mm. The culture that was once lost. I like that they're survivors. They saw the writing on the wall and they found a way to keep themselves and their families alive in spite of I am a horrific right. situation. Right. A great thing about the Xi'an, they're kind of known for their rather pungent eating choices amongst humanity. They kind of poop like birds do, so it's just, they don't pee. They just do like the combo. So uh, if you see what looks like a... <laughs> <laughs> what? That's great. Bird bath uh, in a Xi'an ship uh, that is not a water fountain. Uh, don't drink from it. The Xi'an society is based around these uh, family house lines. <laughs> it's very important of tracing their lineage. The emperor is their own house. And part of the thing is, is uh, there's a sort of a mandatory service period for all Xi'an where they have to serve basically for the government. And that's to help foster kind of a sense of unity amongst the Xi'an people. Technologically speaking, are probably a little bit more advanced than we are. They are masters of anti-gravity tech from a very long time before they discovered space, like jumping, jump tunnels and things like that. Xi'an yeah. are very long lived. And so their view of time is different than humanities. Partially because of their philosophy, Litova, which is a kind of a moral code and a system of belief. There was very close to an interspecies war kicked off when we first met the Xi'an. It was during sort of like this gold rush era where everybody was just out trying to terraform planets as quickly as they could to try and secure, you know, mining rights. The Xi'an, who are already us in the elbows. system, saw we these strange aliens elbows. trying to terraform a planet that was in their territory and went, hmm, that's a little weird. What's going on and here? And then 
forcibly captured all the humans, contacted the human government and said, hey, you guys left something in our system. We don't like it. Please take it back. Probably <laughs> one kind of mysterious. We don't know much about them. We <laughs> They'll eat your babies. And they trade a lot of different things. So, you know, they'll eat your babies and take the crib and trade it out for like a size two, uh, you know, laser cannon. <laughs> you know, from observation. Well, I don't know. That they seem I don't know, very, Mitch. Very What's insular. up, Mitch? How you doing, buddy? They seem to believe in the idea of a meritocracy. There are very. Yeah, let's go back and look at that fleet real quick. That's that. That was tight, man, with that king ship right there. We you know from observation that they seem to be very, very insular. They seem to believe in the idea of a meritocracy. There are very powerful warriors. They're very hardy. They can exist for short times in the vacuum of space. Our observers think that they're harvesting resources for some greater purpose, and some people think that they just really like to fight. And either one of those could be true. They sort of were introduced to us when an outpost was mysteriously sort of wiped out. Judging from their ships, they have very utilitarian aesthetics. They are oriented around the clans that they seem to come from, but we have never observed anything that I love, indicates I a love these little, uh, little like Vandal clans have raided humanity. Scenarios they're, they're, they're take as many resources portraying for us on all these different alien cultures. It's great into Vandal space, uh, and it's what sort of kickstarted a active military, a much more active, proactive military campaign against them. So they're sort of the alien culture that we are currently locked in a uh, sort of war with. Of course, there's a lot of debate going on against what is the end game of that war against the Vandal. Is it does it mean wiping them out? altogether does it mean setting up a border defense that they can't get through does it mean reclaiming the systems that we've lost to them ideally we, we want to put this in a position where like the players are the ones who are helping reveal some of this information uh that's that's you know always that's been one cool. of the things has been very you know fun about this oh 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 dynamic kind of storyline happening through player interaction bonus you know what lore team man you're on the ball dude that that's actually really cool, like finding out more as time goes on through through, through player actions. That's fucking cool. That is something that I don't think any game really has done successfully in an MMO. Like that would be very cool if they could do this correctly. I would love that shit. I would love it. This game is this idea that like, you know, Chris wants the players to help unlock the mysteries of the universe. Yeah, that's great. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that just like the human society of 2951, our alien neighbors are represented by a multitude of corporations and organizations. Yeah, what's the price on the ship, Mitch? What Do we know what the price is on, on the railing right now? Because uh, I might put it up for a giveaway. I, I think I'll buy it and give it out. 200 with the war bond? That's very acceptable. I think that I think we got our next giveaway. I think we got our July giveaway. How about that? Do you guys like a railing for July? Huh? Well, you guys have been supporting the channel so much. I think that's what we're going to do for July. This month, either a prospector or a Connie Taurus, man. We're bumping them up. We're bumping it up, man. Let's do it. We'll, we'll throw in the skin, too. We'll do that for July. How about that, guys? That sound good? All right. You guys are fucking awesome. You guys deserve it. That a greater variety of alien vehicle offerings helps to build a more diverse and interesting universe to explore. And that for the for the aliens themselves, the Banu are clearly the best. Or the Xi'an. Maybe the Tabarin. Which one poops from their mouths? <laughs> Don't forget to check out the robertspaceindustries.com website for all the Alien Week details and for insights. Thank you, Oscar Star Citizen. It must be so. Kuato DG says it must be so. It's fucking little hands, man. <laughs> those little hands, those little, little hands. Yeah, so is this when is this going to come out? Any idea on release date for this thing? So we're saying 220 uh or 200 with war bond. 
Uh, we're not quite sure when this is ever going to come out, are we? Do we know? <clears throat> like, w when, when are we going to get the rail in? Any idea? It's in white box right now? Mm. Okay. Okay, now there's some interesting uh, information that I do maybe have. It's speculation, and we'll go over it after the Inside Star Citizen review, which it is right now. Let me do what Jared's doing. It is right now the end of the Inside Star Citizen review. It's been a quiet night. It's been a quiet, intimate night. I feel much closer to everybody here tonight. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you. Don't forget to like and share. If you're not uh, here with us live and you're not feeling that first level energy, don't worry. I'm going to try and do some of these a little bit earlier for our EU audience. I love you guys. We're global. I got to start doing some of these a little bit earlier for you guys. I understand. Schedule's been crazy. Don't worry. I will try and schedule a few a little bit earlier. But I have to say, we are going to have more fun. We are going to have an after party. Yes, we are. And we're going to talk about the Gatak railing. A little bit deeper now. So let's do that. Pepe, thanks for watching on YouTube. And if you're here live, we got some uh, fun. We got after party time. So let's talk more. Oh, God. Perfect way to end it. Thank you, Mitch. We're very excited.